the unearned gift of faith. Today, Paul is having us recall the reality of our faith. He reminds us that it's a free gift. It's not something that we can purchase, nor is it something that once we we have it, we can earn and maintain it by a bunch of good works, like going to church a lot and praying a lot and doing all kind of religious practices. Paul wants us to stress the complete gift nature of faith aside from what we say or do. Paul calls to mind Abraham, who is our real hero when it comes to faith. He kept faith that he'd have many children even though he had reached the age of 100 and his wife Sarah and he couldn't possibly have offspring. And we run into persons who don't have faith in God. We can see the uh, arbitrariness of God. Sometimes people who don't seem to have faith appear to be outstanding persons. They care for the poor and suffering more than some churchgoers. Even atheists can stand for justice more than those who have faith. But I have to admit that rather than condemn these people of good works to hell, in my mind I surrender to God's love for all people and leave God to be their judge. Given the enormity of God's love as seen in the cruel death of Jesus on the cross, his blood speaks volumes of God's love for even people who don't seem to have faith. So I suspend my judgment of others and thank God for the gift of faith that burns in my soul. The gift is so precious. (laughs) I have a hard time believing that I can be so loved. Part of me wants to deny it. Another part of me wants to do something to prove to God that I'm worthy of this love. But today, Paul says to stop wondering why I've received the gift of faith. All I have to do is say, thank you, and act like a a spoiled child. Lord, your love for me is so overwhelming. Thank you. Help me to relax and know that no amount of good works can earn your capricious love. Amen.